So, Chuck. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you about heat transfer. All right. Did did heat put in for a transfer? (laughs) I cannot take these conditions any longer. I am putting in for a transfer right now. This is a hostile work environment. So, basically, unless you pump energy into a system, a system left all by itself... Okay, energy will go from the thing that's hotter to the thing that's colder. Right. That is not some great revelation. No, that that is something that you learn from your mother and father. Like that, okay, okay. Shut the damn door! (laughs) Okay. The hell are you trying to heat the whole neighborhood? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so someone serves you a hot bowl of soup. The soup is hotter than the air temperature. Absolutely. What happens if you wait long enough? The soup cools to room temperature. The soup goes down to room temperature. Right. There's a heat transfer between the soup and the air. Right. It takes a lot of heat to heat all the air in your room. Right. So it's not like the the soup turned the 72 degrees into a 90 degree room. Right. All right. But that energy is in the room and it did make some tiny difference in the overall temperature of the room. So the heat's going to go wherever it it most needed, okay? One way to prevent that is, let's put a cover over your soup. Right. Because you just went to the bathroom. And I don't know how long it takes you to poop, but you want hot soup when you come back, I will cover it. Clear some shelf space, bring it back to the (laughs) soup. Okay. So if you cover it, the hot air immediately above the soup does not rise up. Right pulling heat out of the soup. It stays there. What happens? That hot air gets the lid hot. Right. If it gets the lid hot, then the lid will make the air hot. Yes. But it'll do that via conduction. Conduction is the least efficient means of energy transfer. An example of this is you have a fireplace poker. You put one end in the fireplace eventually your handle will get hot at some point at some point right but it's got to work its way molecule by molecule all the way up the poker it's up the poker and it's going to the molecules vibrate sends the vibration to the next one to the next one to the next one and eventually your handle will get warm that's conduction so it delays it for several reasons it traps the air and now the lid can only just transfer heat to the air molecules that touch it. Whereas without the lid, the entire pocket of air sitting above Above your soup soup. rises up. Right. It says there's heat here. Now I have expanded and I am less dense. And if you are air that's less dense, you do what? You rise. So that's why heated air rises. Right. It rises. Does it leave a vacuum there? No. No. What happens? It pulls air behind it. What, and this is air that's not as hot as the air that just went up. Exactly. Okay. This is all the cooler air, the 72 degree air, because this air right above the soup is yep. close to the temperature of the soup. So it rises, cold air comes in, it gets heated, and this cycles, and that's called convection. So conduction is slow. Convection is fast. Right. Okay. You know what's even faster? Radiation. If you pull out an infrared camera, shut out the lights, what would the bowl look like? Oh, it'd be red and glowing. Be, right. Why Why would you see it in the infrared? It is sending light energy to, it is radiating in the infrared to you. Now, radiation only goes in straight lines. This is an interesting fact. Okay. Okay. Did not know that. Which is why if you have a fire, if somebody walks in front of you, you're in their heat shadow. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're like, can you please move? I'm trying to get some fire. Most of the time when people huddle near a flame, it's not because the fire made the air hot. Because any air it makes that's hot does what? It uh, rises and rises up. It doesn't come out. It doesn't come out of the fireplace to reach you. It goes up. Right. Okay. So the heat you're receiving from a fireplace is radiative. Right. That is photons. In that case, infrared photons of light coming straight to you at the speed of light. Wow. Okay. There it is. These are three ways heat moves. So, so just class, tell me the three ways heat can transfer. 
So you got uh, convection, conduction, and radiative. Good. So now I want to make a vessel that heat does not either go in or come out of. I got a heat prison. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> One way to do that is you have two walls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's make them glass for a moment because glass is, is moldable. That's right. how we, why we have bottles and things. Of course. So let's make two layers of glass and have air in between the glass. Yeah, I mean, a okay. lot of windows are, are constructed. That yes, way. yes, yes. A lot okay. of windows are constructed. Uh, when you have double pane, double pane windows, double pane windows have, and that's an insulating feature of the window. So now, if I put something hot inside, mm -hmm. it'll make the glass hot. Right. Just by conduction. So now the glass is going to heat the air. Right. But now the air is just going to go up. Right. The air's trapped inside the, the thing. Mm. Where is it taking the heat? I can't tell you what. physically take the heat anywhere. There is a way for the inner glass to send heat to the outer glass. And which way is it? Uh, radiative. Which was always there available to it. Exactly. Okay. You want to prevent the radiation from going. So what you put in is a radiative barrier. A barrier for Ooh. Right. Nice. Ooh. So now what you have is you put in a substance where the infrared comes out and reflects back. Bad. Ooh. Oh. Oh. What we finally like perfected such a vessel, and you know what we call them? What? Thermos. Yes. <laughs> what a thermos is. <laughs> well, clearly there's one thermos that's been perfected beyond all others because there's what? a big craze about this thermos, or you want they don't call it that, they call it the Stanley Cup or whatever. Anyway. That's and a thing with the big handle sticking with out. The big hand. It's a giant, giant okay. cup. But somebody gifted me one of those, and I oh, really? said, "I have never been that thirsty." <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what it is? It's a plot so that you always stop at the convenience store to pee, and then you got to buy something while you're going to the bathroom. This is a this is a conspiracy. I'm certain of it. But this lady sees her car caught fire, and then she goes into the semi-charred remains of the car. She pulls out the cup and she shakes it and it still has ice in it. She's like, you see, it still has ice in it. Well, okay, all you know is that it was rattling. <laughs> it could have been marbles. It could have been marbles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as a scientist, it, right. it's probably ice, but I'm not gonna say it's ice until right. I've measured until I that. see that it's ice. Or, yeah, and measure that it's and ice, that it's okay? Ice, right. And it's not just marbles in there. So that's, right. Just as a scientist, that's how I would do that. But since we were in my office, I got stuff, okay? I happen to have aerogel. Uh, it's inside this cube. If you look, there's like a ghost in there. Yes. It's that, like... It's the ghost in the cube, not the, the machine. The ghost, look at that. The ghost in... Let me open this up here. Now you can see in there much better. Yeah. It's a very ghost-like substance that uh, is has one of the highest insulating properties of any substance ever created. Aerogel are these long uh, polymer molecules with carbon in them. And if they're long and twisted, then the air doesn't know where to go. Right. It's like the ideal way to trap air. And especially if you have vapor barriers, the heat is not going anywhere. So that's why it's not a magic thing to say that a thermos keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. Right. Because physically, what it's doing is it's preventing heat transfer. That's it. No matter which way, which the way the heat is, is coming, and okay. go, coming or going. You know what else is a good insulator is what? plastic. Right. Plastic. So I happen to have a lunchbox from Disney's awful movie, The Black Hole. Oh. And when was this? Back in the seventies. All right. And worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I opened my lunchbox, and in there is a thermos. Everything's plastic, of course because it's a kid's thing and you don't want anything right. breaking. It's got a plastic lid, so I open that up. And oh, it's got a little sippy um, sippy device. Fancy. That's plastic. Right. Everything's plastic. Yeah, it's a, it's a high... It's That's a, a high-end little thermos there. Do it, right? yeah, especially from the 70s, damn. Yeah, so this is a black hole. So Chuck, you've heard of the the uh, black hole in the center of the Milky Way? You've of heard course. of that? Yeah, right. we, of course. <laughs> like 600 million times the math of our sun, I think, last I checked. Well, here uh, in my black hole lunchbox, I have a Milky Way in the center, in the of, the center of the black hole. Black hole. <laughs> Somebody so, need to spank you for that. Stop. 
So I'm looking in here. It's plastic on the inside, plastic on the outside, but it's actually quite thick. There's a thickness to this. Right. It is. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, it's very thick. That's why the inside of a thermos is always so much smaller in volume than the outside. Right. Because relying on stuffing things in between to prevent heat transfer. That's it. So this is the the innovation of the human brain overcoming restrictions by the laws of physics. Right, there you go. Yeah, overcoming, exploiting overcoming them. the laws of thermodynamics. Yes, exploiting them to our advantage. Screw you, thermodynamics. You won't tell me how to transfer heat. If I put you butt naked in outer space. Right. So space will not, become exceedingly more sexy. <laughs> so heat cannot conduct from your body right. to space. Nope. Because you need physical atom contact for that. Right. Okay. There's no convection. There's no convection. Because there's no, it's a vacuum no of space. It's a vacuum. So that leaves only one way for heat to transfer. Radiative. Radiative. So if you are far away from any star. Right. Your 98.6 degree body, 37 degrees Celsius, will radiate what kind of light? Uh, infrared. Infrared light, because you show up on an infrared camera in a room. Yep. It'll radiate infrared. And radiation until is... Until you are dead. Until you are dead. Infrared <laughs> until you're dead, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just... Infrared just goes, and there it goes. Right. And there's nothing to stop that. Now, when you go out in the cold, okay, mm -hmm. just in cold air... Right. You are still radiating in the way you would be radiating in space, but air is also in physical contact with your body, and the air that touches your body immediately gets heated by your skin, and that gets uh, and it gets swept away. This is why you have wind chill factors, because the air touches you, takes your heat, and then wind blows it away. Right. And then new cold air comes in it. It's almost like convection, except... It's not convection. It's just wind. Wind. Uh, the air um, sucks out your heat, and fresh air comes in to keep that up. So you will freeze to death much faster under windy conditions than under non-windy conditions. Wow. Now, here's an interesting fact. Mm -hmm. It was Apollo 13, the, the ill-fated mission. They're on their way back, and they had to conserve everything. Right. Okay? And they couldn't heat the capsule. Otherwise, they'll they'll run out of other resources that they needed to get back to Earth. Okay. All right. What they figured out was when you are in zero G, which you are when you're just floating back to Earth, if you just stay in one position and don't move, you will heat the air that's touching your skin, but the air won't know where to go after that. There's no gravity. Right. There's no there's no gravity vector for the hot air to rise because there is no up or down. So by just staying there, you end up creating a the, heat suit, a heat, a heat blanket of just air, air around you, around you. And the air itself makes a good insulator. And so that way you, um, you, you it's it's like you were putting on a coat. Wow. Well, uh, well, this is uh, control. Uh, we're, we're not going to be able to heat you guys on the way back. Uh, but uh, what we're uh, what we're thinking here is that you just stay perfectly still. Uh, <laughs> it's like, bro, no, <laughs> nah, bro, uh, uh, we, we need a better plan. And by the way, that's why clothing works. True. Think that's, about it. Yeah, no, that's right. It's you just, heat the air inside your clothing. Inside your clothes. And, it's, it's, and that's why you can go out into colder conditions, right. and you are warmer wearing clothes than not wearing clothes. Suppose I move you closer to a star. Let's move you closer to the sun. Oh, thank God. Now what's going on? Well, now I'm getting the sun's radiative heat. There you go. The sun has radiate is, right. is radiating mm. with energy way higher than infrared. Yes. Okay? So there's some distance where energy from the sun is just right for you. Where you could be buck naked in space. However. And comfortable. However, only the side of you facing the sun. Oh, God. The side of you where the sun ain't shine, don't shine. Right. That's radiating out to the rest of the universe. Oh, so man. half of you is freezing. The other half. So if you have to go on a rotisserie. You're on a rotisserie. And if you don't, you will literally freeze your ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Ha! <laughs>
Freeze your ass off. Right. <laughs> off. <laughs> Clean off. Your, your body will split right split. down the middle. One part will vaporize. The other part will yeah, yeah. All right, Chuck, that's all I got for you. Wow, that is great. That was awesome. That was so much fun. I didn't leave anything out of that there, No, we I, listen, we have... We have transferred all of the information about heat transfer to anybody who is watching. <laughs> and the better thermoses are the ones that simply take the longest for heat to either get in or heat to get out. Right. That's all it is. It's not so, deep, it's not deeper than that. It's not so, magic. So stop it with your big stupid cup. <laughs> stop it. All right. <laughs> Let it go. All, all right. right. Chuck, always good to have you, man. Always a pleasure. This has been Star Talk. Me just blathering. <laughs> about, <laughs> this time about heat transfer. More than you ever cared to know. But it all applies to our lives. And whether you can have a cold one waiting for you if your car burns. <laughs> Neil Brass Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. <laughs> <laughs>